Hi, welcome to Vicky Makes and Builds. So, as you no doubt have guessed, today I have for you section five of the epic 33,600 piece wildlife puzzle from Educa. Today is especially exciting because once section five is done, that means the puzzle is halfway done. Half of the wildlife puzzle will be finished. I can't believe I'm almost halfway through this thing. It's gonna look so amazing. Even just halfway done, I'm sure it's gonna look so amazing. So just by way of an intro, I'm just gonna quickly go through what's actually on the section. I've got the poster folded up here like I usually do. And I'd say by far the standout feature in this section is this orangutan here, right in the middle, just a little bit near the, nearer to the top, hanging from the trees there. And he's just, oh, it's just gorgeous. <laughs> gorgeous be orangutan with little baby attached. So I'm really looking forward to building that. We've also got the first hippos in this section. Not done any hippos yet so far. Got this nice big white bird down here. A little tiny bit of a crocodile peeking in there. I've not done one of those yet either. And of course, all of the usual birds and butterflies and beautiful bright flying things. Uh, there's quite a lot of water in this section still. Still got a little bit of waterfall peeking in there at the edge. And of course, all the green. <laughs> so with it being one of the central sections and it's, you know, part of the puzzle where it's all opening out, it's very similar to the last section in terms of the different elements that it has in there. And I really did enjoy section four. So I think I'm going to enjoy this one just as much. And I really can't wait to start building it for you. So without further ado, let's get started sorting section five of wildlife. I hope you enjoy. sorting is done and I'm actually really pleased with this sort because look these are quite nice neat wee piles they're not too humongous some are bigger than others but they look manageable and I'm pleased about that so I'll go through them I'll just start on this side and work my way across this pile here is water pieces that have this kind of obvious sort of ripple in it um then tend to be dark green, in some parts dark blue, and some of them have these little water lilies on them. And speaking of water lilies, there may be some crossover between this pile and this pile here, which has lily pads on. So they're water pieces as well, but they have these lily pads. This kind of texture in the water here is very similar to the pile I just showed you. So. I think probably these are two piles that might be done either at the same time or just one straight after the other. So that's lily pads there. This one's really straightforward. These are the zebra pieces. I like it when there's zebra in a puzzle because, you know, they're just so easy to pick out, very uncomplicated. There'll be no miss sorting in there. This pile here is the flamingo that is flying up in the trees just there and the that I mean that's another pretty obvious pile there aren't many pieces like that but the flamingo has pink legs but also this bird at the bottom here this crane also has pink legs so there may be a little bit of miss sorting there but I think that'll be pretty easy to fix once I find them this pile here is butterflies and birds and dragonflies and things like that. Any really brightly coloured flying thing is in this pile here. This is pieces that are this really, really light green colour and they will be the tops of these trees. This pile here is relatively big. These are more water pieces, but these are a very obvious purple colour. This pile here is water pieces that are more kind of blue in colour. 
Some of them have sort of bubbles on, some of them are obvious waterfalls, some of them, oh, I think that went in the wrong pile. Some of them are just areas of still water. Some of the pieces are almost white, but you can still see that there's like water falling there. So this pile here is, as closely as I can determine, um, this bird here. The bird's white, but there's yellow kind of tints to the feathers. You've got some shadowy bits here, which are kind of gray and purple. You've got black tips on these wings. So I've done what I can to separate those, but there may be some missorting that's happened in here. Not sure. But anyway, that's what that's supposed to be. This pile here is one of the bigger ones, and that is because it is the orangutan. They were quite obvious, those pieces. You have this sort of orangey in colour, but there's quite a lot of brown as well. And it was a pile that I may have done some, may have some crossover with this pile, may have been some missorting going on because the, there's some browns in this pile as well. And that is because this pile is the, the hippo and the crocodile here. So you've got a little bit of this crocodile's head here and you've got the hippos that are also a kind of a brownie colour, but they're a slightly different shade of brown. So I think I've largely got that right, but it may well be that some of the brownie colours of the hippo have got mixed in with some of the brownie colours of the orangutan. But anyway, that's that's the hippo and the crocodile. They're the edge pieces, nice and simple. They're the giraffe pieces. These pieces here are any pieces with sky in them. This pile here is, I'm going to name this the internal edges pile. It's the only other pile aside from the edges themselves that have been sorted by shape. This puzzle has these shapes scattered among the sections and but they only have a few because these make up the the borders between the repeat cut sections. This pile here is pieces with any red or pink flowers in. Here we've got piece any pieces with the dark branches in, some are almost completely covered, some just have one going halfway down. This is the green pieces. I've been a little lazy with the sorting on this. I could have sorted this further. There are pieces like this where you've got like a certain type of leaf that could have been separated and like this where it's kind of flat shiny leaves. And I probably will go through this pile again and separate them further, but I'm not going to do that until I actually get to them. The green, usually I do that towards the end of one of the sections. There is a lot of green in this puzzle. Obviously, it's a jungle scene, so, that, you know, we're used to that. That is it. That is all my piles sorted. So in terms of a plan, I think... I will probably just do my usual thing, deal with the obvious piles first and the smaller piles. So my thinking is to start with the edges and then move on to the zebra and the flamingo and all the butterflies and birds, any really bright, obvious colours. And then I'm just going to take it from there. So here goes. Let's get building this gorgeous puzzle, section five of wildlife.
Okay, so I've got a lot of my smaller piles done and some of my more colourful piles. And I was right about the there being a bit of a mixture of crane with flamingo because I've managed to put together the crane's legs <laughs> largely and also its beak. So that's kind of a bit um, sort of disembodied there, but that's a good bit there that's getting started. The flamingo is looking good, just missing a little bit of its neck. I think probably that's ended up maybe in the sky pieces. And yeah, once again, as with all of the other sections on this, we've got lots of floating butterflies, which I've tried to put in roughly the right place. And the zebra and giraffes, which I've also done, are kind of in the middle of the section, but obviously because I'm building it the top half on the left and the bottom half on the right they're kind of at the top on this side and again some butterflies as well so it's coming together very floaty still I thought because I was starting to pull together some purple bits I thought that I might have a go at one of the bigger piles and tackle the uh, purple water pieces and at the same time, I'm going to pull out these lily pad pieces. Now, I might even do the lily pads first. It's a smaller pile and it's just they're just a bit more obvious where the lily pads are. So maybe tackle that one first and then move on to this one. One of the things this pile has is a lot of pieces with this yellowy colour. And I think the reason for that is because it's where the crane is standing. And I think if I can put those together and kind of get the outline of this bird a little bit more, it's going to make it easier to put it together and that'll hopefully put together a wee like quite a big chunk in this bottom section yeah it's going well so far so i'm just moving on now then to some of the water pieces mainly the purple and the pieces with the lily pads on So a lot of these purple pieces have gone in. We've got a good chunk of this water gone in here. And actually, unexpectedly, this bird came together quicker than I thought it would. Because of what I had was a lot of these kind of dark, bluey, purpley pieces out. And it turned out to be the shadow part of the bird's wings. So and then so I, what I did was I I obviously had kind of the outline of this bird as well because there was some purple on them so because it was filling out quite a lot I also had these pink legs and the beak I thought right I'll delve into the bird pile or what I thought thought was the bird pile and I found a good bunch of pieces but that pile did turn out to be quite miscellaneous and there's a few left in there that don't belong to the bird at all so I'm not sure where they go I think they might belong to the hippo 
and also the crocodile. So we've got a little bit of the crocodile coming together here and a little bit of the hippo's back coming together here. And I've managed to obviously join up quite a lot of these lily pads as well. Start to get the outline of some of these leaves and just here there's a fish jumping out of the water. So I need to find those pieces as well. But uh, yeah, I, I, I basically just kind of dipped in and out of a lot of other piles. So not only the bird pile, I also dipped into the blue water pieces pile, which had a few of these pieces in from this bird's wing and a few more kind of purpley pieces. Some of these splashy bits that I found in there as well. So I've just I've managed to fill out a fair bit doing that. I've got all these left. And I'm just slowing right down now. I had to shape sort because the pile was just a wee bit too big to just, you know, randomly kind of try and put them in. I think it was made more sense to shape sort. So that's all that's left of those ones now. So I've got a few wee leftover piles, some lily pad ones there. That's the giraffes there. But the nice thing is I've got room at the side of my table to just leave the leftover piles kind of at the side rather than them taking up room in the box. So my next job, since I am filling out this bottom section quite a lot and I'm starting to get some hippo and some crocodile in here, I think I'm now going to tackle the pile of hippo and crocodile pieces. And then hopefully I can fill out a lot of these gaps here and um, get this bottom section really, really filled out, maybe even attach some of these bits. I've also got the pile of kind of ripply water pieces, which I might also have a wee go at as well, all just kind of trying to fill in this bottom section. So that is what I'm going to tackle next. This puzzle is coming together so well. So I don't know why these sections are tending to come together from the bottom upwards. Like this is still really sparse on this side, just still a few butterflies and birds and things. But this is really, really filling out. It's possibly because there's just more going on here. So I've got more piles I can work with that are smaller. You know, you've got like that side. Yes, there's a few flying things, but really it's just skies and trees. Whereas... Here you've got water, you've got lily pads, you've got this really big bird, you've got crocodile, the hippos, the giraffes. There's, there's just, I don't know, there's just more kind of elements to it um, that build up. And it just seems to make sense to do 
a lot of them together. And I have been diving in and out of other piles to complete this section. So I really, I had found that a lot of these bits of the hippo, whilst there were a lot of brown pieces that were kind of obvious, there were also a lot of really shiny kind of whitish purplish pieces. So a lot of those pieces ended up in with the bird. And so I was pulling a lot out of there. I've really just got a few leftovers from that now. And a lot of these pieces were also in the orangutan pile because there's brown in the orangutan. There's kind of purpliness in the orangutan. And I've been going through that quite a lot as well. So, <laughs> yeah, it's been a bit, uh, it's been a little bit dipping in and out of lots of the piles. But largely I got the sorting right, I would say, as a general rule. We've got some leftovers there. From pretty much all the piles I've been working on and I think the logical thing next would be to work on this area here which is like waterfalls it may well be that I will fill out this bottom bit as well because although there's some green in here you've also like it's quite distinctive green so you've got a, a lot of these kind of smooth dark big leafed plants at the bottom you've got these pointy leafed plants at the bottom so I think what I might do is just really work on trying to fill this out some more get that bit filled in where the water is get these green leafy bushes filled out possibly some of these rocks and stones and then it will just be green really and I think that I can move over to this side and start to do the orangutan and then I think really it'll just be flowers and sky and green pieces <laughs> That'll be it. So yeah, absolutely loving it. Absolutely loving it. Really, really coming together. Bit of a puzzle of two halves, but still really coming together.
Okay, I really am on the home straight now. This whole bottom bit is done up to that piece there. We've got a handful of pieces that need to go in there and one just up there. So this side is really filled out and all of these pieces remaining are now sorted into shape. So that is all the pieces that are the standard shape, but that stand sort of tall. And there's a few overflow pieces in there. Then all of these ones are standard shape, but the other way. Then we've got all the odd shaped pieces here, of which there aren't that many. They all fit on one sheet. So aside from the handful up there, really most of the gaps are down here. I have filled out all of the top bit, filled the gaps up there. And again, I think although there's a fair few pieces to sift through here, I think that there's still enough textures and shades to make to make it so that the pieces stand out a little easier. So for example, there's still a fair bit of texture going on down here. So hopefully I can look and see what piece is needed and just find them at a glance out of whichever shape I'm looking at. Then you've got here, you've got kind of smoother pieces with the sort of purpley shades to them. Here you've got a little more texture going on. Still got some vines left that I need to somehow figure out how they go. So yeah, I think that there is still plenty to go out here and I'm hopeful that it's not going to take too much longer now. Uh, but I, yeah, I really am at shape sorting now and just filling in these gaps and then it'll be done. So I have once again been caught out by the repeat cut pattern in this puzzle. This piece was bamboozling me for a while and I found this piece fits in perfectly, but it doesn't, it's not the right piece. So I had a wee hunt around and I found it there, which I had to look closely to see. <laughs> so I'm gonna swap those pieces over. Trick now is trying to get it out without uh, breaking the piece, which isn't easy. Uh, okay, so that goes there. Yes, that's correct. And that goes there. Yes, that's correct. Thank goodness I was starting to worry. <laughs>
Wow, this puzzle is simply stunning. As you saw just there, that is only half of it and it's already so, so beautiful and so big. You could see at the very end of that little montage I showed you there that I was having to do quite a bit of crawling to get into the middle of it to, to sit on it and by the end I was just so tired that I sort of collapsed in a heap um, but my friend who was taking the photos thought that was hilarious and decided to snap a picture of it. So having done half of this puzzle by now I am very familiar with it and I don't have vast amounts to say outside of what I've already said in previous videos. I'm still absolutely loving doing it. I so, I'm so glad that I bought this puzzle and that I am building it. I'm just having so much fun with it. Up to now the last section, section four, has been my favourite section but I think this one slightly edges it. Because of all the reasons for the last one really, it has all these different elements and things I can sink my teeth into. It was not too bad to sort and put the piles together but I think this one edges it for me because of that orangutan that was just so much fun to build and it just looks so lovely. Now I'm aware that I do tend to wax lyrical about this puzzle. I think the artwork is absolutely beautiful and the image quality is just amazing and I found that on both the Educa puzzles that I have done. I just think it's such a joy to build. I will just say one thing that frustrates me about it though and that is that the pieces in this puzzle have a tendency to get stuck together. I don't know if it's just the shape of the prongs in this puzzle that mean they just kind of get hooked in, but I did get a damaged piece in this puzzle and it was quite disappointing. It ripped the top of the, the, the image on one of the prongs right off. I did manage to fix it, I glued it back on and you know it's not really that noticeable but it is something that frustrates me about this puzzle so as much as I am loving it there are one or two things that bother me slightly and on the subject actually of the pieces in Educa puzzles I know that there are many who find the crumbly loose fitting nature of Educa puzzles to be quite frustrating and I mean that's no different in this puzzle it's quite crumbly puzzle and it does make it difficult to move sections around. Uh, the other Educa puzzle that I did entering the bedroom the 6000 piece puzzle had a much bigger variety of shapes as well than this puzzle so I know it's not across the board but this puzzle is largely the standard piece shapes and it's a very strict grid cut few people have asked me about that aspect of it as well and how I get on with it and honestly having done this puzzle for like a year now <laughs> and having done five sections of it I'm well used to its quirks I'm used to the way it is and the way it's kind of laid out and for me I just think the image quality the vibrancy of the colors the beautiful artwork all of that it just it just trumps it all really for me and I'm able to just forget about all those niggly little things about the pieces. But I would be interested to know what you think of Educa puzzles. If you've done an Educa puzzle and you've found those things to be the case with your Educa puzzles, what are your thoughts on that? Is that something that basically would put you right off and you'll never want to do an Educa puzzle again or are you a bit more like me and you can just sort of move on from that and just enjoy the beauty of the puzzle and the joy of building such a lovely image? I, I kind of feel with Educa puzzles like I've never really heard an in-between opinion on it. It's either been people love them or they really don't like them at all. Kind of a bit like Marmite. <laughs> so I am wondering where you would stand on Educa puzzles on this. Love them or hate them? Or are there some people who, you know, just don't mind them? Um, I would be interested to know your thoughts on that. And while you ponder that particular question, I'll give you a few statistics on the puzzle so far. So with it being halfway done, that means there are currently 16,800 pieces assembled in the puzzle and it stays the same height throughout. Uh, 157 centimeters but the width is now sitting at 285 centimeters which is around about 112 inches wide so it's getting pretty big now. Uh, based on 
my time lapse footage. I have worked out that this section has taken me roughly 38 hours to build. Seems like longer because there were some delays with it. I actually started the section before I left for Spain. I got about three quarters of the way through it and I was hoping to get it done before I left but it just didn't happen. So I finally got around to finishing it obviously uh, but there was this gap in the middle where I went to Spain so it kind of feels like longer but all told it took me around about 38 hours to do. I'm uncertain when I will get back to this puzzle however what I do know is that section six and seven will be mixed sections that I will do together. So the next video I do on wildlife will be part one of a mixed bag section on six and seven. So don't worry, there will still be two videos and I'll still be bringing them out through the build. It won't be that you'll have to wait for me to do over 6,000 pieces of puzzle before you get another video. I'm just not entirely sure yet quite when I'll get back to it, but I will get there, I promise you. And I think that's everything, so I want to thank you so much for watching. I really, really hope you've enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And, and if anyone is interested, I'm currently releasing some full time-lapse videos of each of the individual sections of the wildlife puzzle so far. I've already done section one and that is for my YouTube members and for my patrons. So if you're interested in seeing those, I'll be bringing them out over the next couple of weeks and I'll leave links in the description below um, for you to join if you'd really like to see those. For those of you that are already members or patrons, I want to thank you so much for your extra support. And in the meantime, I will say happy puzzling and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.